So hello everyone, um, I'm Abby McAuliffe, um, I am the Alumni Volunteer Manager at King's College London uh, and it's a pleasure to be with you today to tell you about a virtual mentoring event that we delivered on our graduate platform last month. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk through how exactly we delivered this and share some tips with you that we found worked really well um, in case you wish to do similar on your own platform. Um, so what you're seeing here is just a few stats to say that we're a big university um, and we have a large pool of uh, contactable alum alumni. So um, in fact, we've just found out close to 200,000 contactable alumni. Um, and our graduate platform is uh, one channel that we use to engage um, our alumni community. This is just a little bit of background on our platform. Um, so we launched uh, Kings Connect last January and we really started focusing on growing the platform in spring when I came into the role. Um, and we had significant growth um, taking place over the summer as we welcomed our graduating class to the alumni community and we pro uh, promoted the platform quite heavily, which saw um, significant growth. Um, we're really keen to offer a mass mentoring program on our platform and we're working on facilitating more mentoring and connections to enable more of those to take place um, because, you know, as I'm sure you're all aware, we found that it doesn't happen on its own. Um, we did have an in-person mentoring event scheduled um, to take place last month that we were faced with cancelling, um, but we really wanted to offer the opportunity for our alumni to connect during lockdown. And we asked ourself, um, ourselves if we would be able to deliver a live event through Graduate. The challenge, obviously, was that um, Graduate has mentoring functionality, but we had to figure out a way to make it obvious um, who was there in real time to answer questions on the spot and differentiate those event participants from the users who were, you know, who offer their help on the platform, but maybe are not taking part in the platform, sorry, pardon me, in the live event. Um, so we did some testing and we came up with Kings Connect Live, a virtual mentoring event. Um, and um, I'll kind of talk through the plat uh, sorry, pardon me, the, the format for that and share some tips that we found worked really well. Um, so the format we came up with was to create a group um, in the platform. Um, we did this by, um, we, we invited men the alumni mentors to post an introduction on the group feed. Um, and in that introduction, we asked them to say what they studied at King's, what they, uh, when they graduated, what they do now in the industry that they're in, and a couple of things that they could advise on. So maybe it's starting your own business, a business, relocating to a new city, building networks, et cetera. Um, and that was how we um, had our mentors really identify and, and kind of put them, you know, let people know that I'm here to answer your questions. You can connect with me in this hour. Um, we then invited um, alumni and students to join the event as mentees and um, they could see who was in who was there by looking at the introductions on the feed and they could reach out to those people they could see who was there decide who they want to connect with and we advised them to connect by either posting a comment below the introduction post or reaching out through the messaging um, part of the platform and sending them a direct message um, one thing that we did that we, uh, we, we found worked really well was we asked the alumni mentors to join the group the day before the event was due to take place. And we asked them to post their introductions. Um, and, and that way, when, you know, when the event started and, and the mentees joined, they could see straight away who was there and who they could connect with. There wasn't this delay while, pe while people figured out like, what they wanted to say you know, straight away. As soon as the event, as soon as 5.30 struck, and mentees could see who was there and they started uh, connecting and sending messages. Um, our biggest concern really was that people wouldn't know how the event was supposed to work as this was a little bit of a hack of the platform features. You know, this platform wasn't sp specifically built for real-time interactions. You know, it doesn't look like a chat room which people might be used to or perhaps would have been expecting. And so um, we really wanted to make sure people knew how to take part in this event. Once we knew what, how we wanted it to run, we created a how-to sheet, and that's what you're seeing on the left there. Um, and we shared this with participants as, a, as the event launched, you know, started, um, to make sure people knew what exactly they were supposed to do and what, what to expect. Um, we really wanted to pin this at the top of the group, but at the time you couldn't pin posts in groups. 
Um, but I'm pleased to say that I've fed this back to Sam, our account manager, and I'm pleased to say that this functionality has since been added in. So, so thank you to the, the team at Graduate for listening and making this adaptation. I think if we were to do this event again tomorrow, this would be really helpful to pin that at the top. So whenever someone came into the group, they could see exactly what was going on and exactly knew exactly how to get started. Um, and I think the top tip I would share with you here was, you know, if you're going to do something similar and use the group functionality, I'm sure you can appreciate there were lots of people posting their introductions, people posting questions. And so, you know, there were lots of wordy posts and, and we created this how to sheet as an image to uh, make sure it kind of stood out in that in that group feed and, and that worked really well. So would would definitely encourage something similar or using, you know, using images if you if you were going to do something similar. Um, we also um, did, did, did some facilitation in the event by asking some general questions on the feed, um, which is some, you see a couple of those there. Um, and we really did that to engage mentors who may have not been receiving um, person, you know, direct messages. They might not have been engaged in one-to-one -one conversations. Um, so we, um, yeah, we, we posted a few questions that they could engage with. And um, as you, you might be able to see there, there's quite a few comments um, below those few. And we got good engagement with those questions that we posted throughout the event. Um, these work really well. And they're actually highlighted in the participant feedback that we received as something that mentors really enjoyed contributing to. So um, we would look to, to do that again. Um, this slide just kind of shows you how we measured engagement and the activity that was taking place uh, through the event. Um, we used the stats on the platform that are generated through the, uh, the, the, the platform dashboard um, to see kind of who was there and who was taking part. Um, so what we did was, you know, we, we really relied heavily on that to kind of a make sure it wasn't a flop and there were kind of people at the end of this, this platform take, you know, doing what we'd asked and taking part in the conversations. Um, and just to, to, to yeah, just to as, as I said, measure the engagement and success afterwards as well. So we downloaded the engagement dashboard um, and kind of compared that with with the stats we got afterwards. So, so I'll just talk you through what you're looking at. So on the left there, the top um, uh, snippet was taken just before the event, about five minutes before we went live. Um, the second one you see in the middle was taken just as the event finished, and then the bottom one we actually took that uh, screenshot the following morning. <clears throat> excuse me, the following morning. Um, and what you're seeing there is obviously a, a, a big increase in the number of messages that were sent and, and the conversations that were taking place um, kind of um, in the platform, but obviously we couldn't see those. Um, so that was, you know, that was really good to see. That's exactly what we were looking for. Um, I'm sure you can appreciate the second we went live and I posted the first, uh, the first message on the group that said, here you are, you know, go for it, start connecting. I was sitting there very anxiously. So I kind of downloaded, you know, ha had the dashboard going and I just clip, kept clicking refresh and it was really good to see that those numbers started increasing. So I breathed a bigger breath of relief there. Um, but I mean, overall, you know, the positive, uh, sorry, pardon me, the, the feedback we received was really positive. Um, people seemed to really appreciate the opportunity we gave them to connect and give back or have their questions answered. Um, some things that were flagged in the feedback was about user experience, such as, you know, the need to keep refreshing the, the group page to, to see the activity. Um, and you had to do lots of scrolling to kind of see who was there and who they wanted to connect with. Um, that, that was something that we anticipated, so we weren't surprised to see it come through in the feedback. Um, nevertheless, we, we've kind of shared that with, with Graduate and Sam, our account manager, um, and I'm really pleased to, to hear that they're already kind of looking at how they can make some adaptations to the platform so that, you know, high traffic events like this can run a bit smoother. So I think that's really exciting. Um, you know, uh, all, all the feedback kind of on our own experience of delivering this event, um, you know, taking that all on board, this is easily the most exciting thing we've done on the platform. Um, you know, we saw a huge increase in the interactions and the activity on the platform on the day of the event. Um, versus a normal day and so we're you know we're really pleased with how it went and, and we're really glad that we tried something new as well. <clears throat> In terms of our learnings um, you know we found this was a really good way to engage our alumni community and support our recent grads and students. We're really excited that this could be a good way to engage um, the willing volunteers that we have who are based abroad so there's not you know we don't at the moment have a very clear call to action for someone who wants to engage with mentoring a student or um, you know 
take part in an event, so to speak. But you know, at the moment, you know, a lot of the, the volunteering events we, we run are on campus in London. Um, as a result, you know, we're looking to run another one of these events during lockdown because we do think it went quite well and people really appreciated the opportunity to give back and get involved in with their with their alumni community. Um, and in fact, you know, we're perhaps looking to incorporate um, these kind of Kings Connect live events into our regular programming, um, particularly if some of those developments come to kind of improve the user experience um, from, from, from the, the team at Graduate. Um, one question we have is, you know, how can we scale this for larger numbers while still being user friendly? And I think, as, as I just said, you know, currently users have to scroll a lot um, and there's lots of refreshing but if those some of those adaptations come I think that will make it um, a really fantastic thing to kind of incorporate and, and use all year round um, and, and you know what one thing uh, that, that I, I really learned from this was that people responded to having a really clear call to action on the platform this isn't something we've we've tried um, before but we're definitely looking now at how we can do more um, do more of this to encourage more mentoring because that is a big focus for us for the platform um, I mean, I guess a shout out to any of the other, um, you know, the other users of, of Graduate or maybe using it in this way. I would love to hear from anyone afterwards on what um, call to actions they're, they're asking of their users, whether that's calls for regular content or answering questions that you then share with other users or students or, or calling, you know, asking people to join mentoring programs. So, you know, please do uh, drop me an email, connect on LinkedIn. Would love to kind of um, have conversation to see how, how other people are using their platform. And that's Brilliant. everything from me, Daniel. Well, Ab Abby, there, there was uh, thunderous applause at this point as I'm talking. So imagine the, the, they're going crazy. Let, let me, if you, if you don't mind, just pick up on a couple of questions that have come through just to try and fill them for them. So we had Wendy Spratt that said, how, how do you determine the, the, the best time of day um, to do an appeal, if, especially if you're, you're doing a mentoring on an international level, right? So what, how did you manage that? Sure. So, so I'll be really honest, and um, because we felt this was a, a little bit of of, of the hack of, of a hack of the platform, um, I was really, uh, really um, um, keen to have a bit of a, a soft launch, really, of this to try it with a bit of a smaller group. So, what we did was we we held it at a time not too dissimilar to when our in person event was gonna was gonna run. So, we first promoted this as a direct and replacement of our of our in person event. So, we only invited those who had signed up to attend the in person event. Um, and we held it at a similar time to our in-person event. The in-person one was due to start at 6.30. We actually just bought it, bought it a bit earlier to start at 5.30 p.m. So very much catered for a UK audience. Um, and we, we pulled that time forward a bit because I think now no one's commuting. 6.30 is very much dinner time and Netflix or, or tending to the kids. So we, we adapted that slightly. Um, the next one we would like to run in lockdown, we intend to do at a time that would be more inclusive for some of our international alumni and students. Um, so we would, um, <clears throat> excuse me, make it so it is, you know, um, just after work time for other, uh, other time zones. And I think what we would perhaps do, and this is one way we could try to scale it, was to have multiple slots. So, you know, there, you can join in from five, you know, time zone relevant to each time zone you could join in 5 30 to 6 30 or 6 30 to 7 30 or 7 30 to 8 30 and that helps um i think uh, make sure that the group feed isn't so packed that it's really difficult to navigate and also right. cater for more people getting involved it feels like the part of the trick to this is, is having that designated time that sort of forces a call to action right if it's open-ended then no one ever actually does anything <laughs> but if you say yeah. this is this is the limit time offer or window. Um, I, there was another question that, that came through. This one's from Eva at Stonyhurst College. She, she was asking really about what happened post the event. Did you see any engagement or sort of any uh, positive effect that carried on after you'd finished your specific mentoring event? Yeah, so I mean, I think one thing that we saw that that's why I took the screenshot the following morning is there were definitely, you know, so we, we kind of signed off right, right. at, at uh, after the when the event finished we kind of saying we're going now you keep going if you want but there'll be no more facilitation to us uh, for, from us and um we you know we still saw more more um, messages happen when, when i logged in the next morning there were still more messages that have been sent since i last took the screenshot than on a normal day sometimes on a normal week um 
I looked through earlier actually uh, this morning to see what activity there's been so far this month and you know I haven't compared it for, for that those concrete uh, figures but I definitely get the sense that there's more mentoring uh, pardon me networking you know messages being sent because of perhaps that on, on another month so um, I don't have the exact figures um, to, to kind of answer that question but my sense is people are more perhaps familiar with um, you know that's the value of the platform right and you know I, I connected with someone in real time in this event but all oh, who else is in the directory let me take a look um, so that's my you know, hope. You know, yeah, Abby, let me let me ask you a probably slightly more embarrassing question, but I'm going to ask you direct. Did you do you think you got the recognition for this? Because you've done a you've got a great result. A lot of people talk mentoring, and the sort of thing you've actually shown by your statistics delivered real benefits. So, how did you sort of internally promote your results to to everyone at King's College? Was there if you're okay to to share with us? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously my, my, my team and my head of team were, was aware that we were running this. I think they're also aware that I was a bit cautious and not quite sure how this was going to go. Um, so I think, you know, the next day when we reported that, um, you know, this was the engagement we got, there were like 150 conversations that took place, a massive increase in the interactions and engagement on the platform. Um, you know, we have, I think we have quite good um, channels of communication with our wider directorate. Um, which is fundraising and support development and that was kind of passed on and i think you know i think when you compare it to this is what happened in this hour and a half versus the engagement we would normally get in a week you could see that that clear jump exactly um so yeah that's kind of how we um how we shared that i guess uh, the the news of the success of that um, and i think you know it was really exciting that, that it, we did it and it went well we had 75 people take part so you know of all of our alumni pool it's actually a tiny drop in the ocean but i think what's really exciting is um the potential to apply this and, and use it you know to engage with larger numbers and um you know as i said alumni around the world i think that would be really exciting and and perhaps where other people will see the you know the exciting prospects of that as well i think i think again what's nice about your case study what we'd like to see, I think, as a profession, whether it's career services or alumni relations or development, is for us to be less fluffy and actually deliver value and demonstrate our value to other stakeholders. And I think you've, you've done a great example of that. And there's a question that came in from Sally Atkinson. Um, she says, uh, did you involve colleagues in your career center with this live mentoring event? Or was it really an alumni thing that you did? How did that work? Sure, yeah, so, great so it question. was yeah so it was just uh, the alumni relations team that delivered this um i deliver a few other like mentoring programs and right. um they are separate i know i know some people in other ar teams you know that work um to deliver mentoring programs in partnership with the careers team we don't um do that explicitly but you know a key kind of stakeholder for me in my my job at kcl is you know, is the careers and employability team. I do work really closely with them and they do, you know, the, the work they do with the students, they refer people to our platform and kind of the support um, services that we can offer them. Um, but in this case, we, um, you know, it was just that kind of AR that, that pushes because um, our careers team use another platform that doesn't necessarily have the, have the same functionality as yeah. this. Um, but th this is kind of where students at King's are directed to come to kind of get that support from alumni. Um, so this was just an AR, an AR um, okay. Got you. Ria from uh, University College Dublin is asking, were you also encouraging longer term connections or was this really just a short sort of short term mentoring? Uh, she's sure. just curious how, how they responded. And yeah, so maybe you could answer that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Good so question. we, so we didn't, I guess we, we did and we didn't. So as we were drawing to an end, as we were drawing the event to an end, we did kind of, you know, post in the group saying you can carry on the conversations you've had and you can also look in the directory to kind of start more people um, connect with other people and start relationships when our follow-up email we kind of made sure that mentors and mentees were aware of the mentoring area on the platform where they could be auto matched with um mentors or mentees and kind of said you know if you, if you enjoyed this you can do more of it look in the directory this is how you search for people who um who you might want to connect with so um we you know we did kind of highlight to people that you could do um keep connecting with those you've connected with or you know how you can find other mentors or mentees on the platform 